You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right. We're going to start emergency pot, emergency live stream today. I want to get all of your guys' thoughts. But then we have the great PJ Brown coming on at 12 o'clock. But first, as everybody knows, Kirk Creesa has entered the transfer portal. Now, we need to be uh, we need to be upfront here about Kerr did some very, very, very good things at the University of Arizona. Um, and there's no doubt about it. He made some very timely shots over his career. At the same time, he also was part of a very, very winning program. I mean, you know, he was the starting point guard for a team that won the most games in a conference uh, or in a coach's first two years. That's all to be said. My opinion, though, is this is that, yes, we definitely salute him for what he was able to do at the University of Arizona, but I do believe that Arizona can do better than Kerr. And here's what I mean by that, is that you look at him right now, and you look at the roster. Kylan Boswell, I think we know at this point, Kylan Boswell needs to be that point guard. Um, He showed it by the end of the year that not only can he shoot, he's got a little bit of a dog in him. He's a guy that, you know what, if things go right, he could be an all-conference player as a sophomore, may, junior year probably at the latest. What Kerr, what some of Kerr's uh, drawbacks and liabilities were is that he came in marked as a shooter, which is every team needs shooters. We've talked about that you know, from the beginning of time. Every team needs shooters. But the problem, though, that I think Kerr, had, that Kerr ran into is that he just wasn't a good enough shooter. And again, he did some very good things here, and we're going to keep coming back to that because I don't want to get... I hate, I can't stand when somebody's out the door and people, you know, throw dirt on him at, at the end. So we're going to keep this strictly on the court. The problem with Kerr, though, is that again, his shooting numbers just weren't good enough. When you're shooting about 36% from the field, 36% from three, and you're not really a next level athlete defensively, you don't bring much to the equation. Yes, he was a very good passer. Totally get that. But we're also the University of Arizona, and we've seen, and granted, I know that he was injured, but in three tournament games, he was three of 24 from the field, eight turnovers, four assists. In Arizona, if you're out there on the court, that just isn't good enough, and we've seen great point guard play over the years that just wasn't good enough. Now, Tommy Lloyd, I think, made a, and again, I don't have any inside information here. I'm just giving my opinion, but Tommy Lloyd, I think, had some insight probably took some inventory of the roster, realized what he needed to get better at, what he did it. So with Kerr Creesa in the transfer portal, and we'll hop back here to Kerr in just a moment, what does that mean for Arizona? I've always felt this, that in Arizona, you shouldn't take a back seat to really anybody. And again, uh, uh, bear down, uh, bear 520 down, we're going to get to Taron Armstrong there in just a moment. But when it comes to uh, Arizona, there's guys that are already in the transfer portal. Look at Caleb Love. Caleb Love averaged 16 points per game at North Carolina this past year. Uh, Steve Robinson was his lead recruiter. Wink, wink, wink. I don't know. Again, I have no insight on that. I'm just saying that, you know, some of those pieces certainly do line up together. And he was a kid that went off in the tournament. He was a former top 10 prospect in the class. He is, uh, that's the kind of guy that you should be able to get, in my opinion. Now, there's other guys as well. And you look at, and we've talked about this before. With the transfer portal, everything is different. Uh, uh, Rick Pitino talked about this uh, when he took over. He said that he doesn't expect uh, St. John's. He said he doesn't expect St. John's to be uh, down for long at all because of what the transfer portal can do. You can get guys in here. Look at Texas right now. You have an basically an entire lineup outside of your center where you've got a starting point or you've got the starting point guard Marcus Carr transfer from a D1 school. You've got Serge Jabari Rice from New Mexico State. You've got the kid from uh, Iowa State that I can never remember his name. Then you got Timmy Allen. Everybody knows him from uh, Utah. By the way, Brooks uh, McDaniel, I appreciate it. I am out of the uh, I am out of the Sacramento airport. That was a uh, that's a time a talk for another time. But Arizona can Arizona can is on that level of Texas. They can get players like that. And what you need now, you look at this roster and what you need is, quite frankly, not really what Kerr can provide. You need athleticism. You need dynamic scoring on the perimeter. Guys that can do that. And again, that's why I'm going to come back to somebody like Caleb Love. Again, I have no inside information on that, but I will say that he would fit in very nicely. Let's just use him as a template because, again, he's the template right there. And I know that his shooting percentages weren't great at North Carolina when you look it up, but um, at the end of the day, though, this is also a team that, you know, 
I don't know how good a coach Hubert Davis is, Davis is, but if you have a starting backcourt right now, and again, uh, bear down five two zero, great point. If you get a, a starting backcourt where you've got Kylan Boswell and Caleb Love, all of a sudden, and you compare that to Kirk Creesa and Courtney Ramey, and that's with all due respect, you become far bigger, you become far more physical out there as well. And that's something that Arizona was uh, miss, uh, missing pretty much this entire season was athleticism and, again, dynamic athleticism at that position. Now, Puff Johnson's another guy that has entered the uh, portal. Again, this is just me guessing. I don't really have any insight on this, but I do believe that Puff Johnson um, probably is not the best fit for Arizona because, again, you need physicality, you need dynamic athletes, and I don't think that he is that kind of dynamic athlete right there. But so that's what you need right there. You need athleticism at those positions because, again, the teams you look at great, you look at great uh, the great Arizona teams. With you know whether that was Lute Olson or Sean Miller, you always had athletes on the perimeter. I mean, you look at uh, I mean, heck, you could look at the Final Four team. You had Sean, you had Sean Elliott. That goes without saying. But then look at you know ninety four. You had Damon. You had Khalid Reeves. You had Reggie Geary. You look at ninety seven. You had Mike Baby, Jason Terry, Michael Dickerson, Miles Simon, O one Arenas Jefferson. Then the Miller great teams where you had Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Aaron Gordon, Nick Johnson. Arizona didn't have any guys like that this year. Arizona needs to be able to get guys. And when you run the style that Tommy Lloyd runs, you need to be able to get some guys like that. And I, I believe that he's going to. I think what he did, and again, and I always need to say, this is just me surmising here. I think he looked at the roster. He took inventory of what needed to be done. And this to me is the first domino that dropped. Because again, uh, Kerr to me, if Kerr, uh, if Kerr is your guy, um, if Kerr's your guy, I think that limits your upside because if you're moving him to the two, he's undersized to the two, not a great shooter. And he's also, like I said, he's, uh, he's a very good, you know, facilitator, but that's going to be Boswell's role at this point. Cord Lopez says absolutely no to Caleb Love. I would love to know why you would be against Caleb Love right there. Again, this is a guy that we saw in the NCAA tournament who, um, you know, was able to get his team to a, a championship and played incredibly well in the process. And again, uh, I'm not saying that in any kind of smarmy way, because again, we're all, we're all equals here, right here. I'm just a fan, just like all of you guys are out there. So, um, but, uh, those are the kind of guys that those are the kind of players that you're looking for. And because again, you can get guys like a Kirk Creesa, you can get a Courtney Ramey, Guys like that. Now, I've had a couple people ask me, where do uh, I see Kirk Kreese landing? Well, the obvious choice is Xavier. Um, again, I could see uh I could see he shot his team out of the tournament this season. I'll I'll you know, that's fair. That's fair, but I'll say this about that though. I also think that Hubert Davis is probably a pretty poor coach. Um I haven't seen anything from him that indicates that he isn't Kevin Ollie. And I also have seen Caleb Love and what he was able to do. And the fact that he was a top 10 player and he's big and he's physical. So again, um, uh, I differ with you right there, but at the same time, I would take him. But those are the kind of guys. As far as Kirk Creesa goes, I believe that uh, Kirk Creesa will um, end up at probably Xavier, maybe a Nevada, um, something like that. That's, I think, a little bit more his, uh, his, uh, you know, um, his speed for lack of a better term. Now I've had people, other people ask me who else is here now. Again, I don't have info on this, but Jason Shears reporting that Dylan Anderson, one of the peaks is considering transferring. I do not like that idea. I like Dylan Anderson a great deal as all of you guys know. And speaking of which, speaking of which let's talk really quick about the four peaks Four peaks, the official brew of PHNX sports. Now you might say to yourself, you know, Mike, uh, what's what's Four Peaks got going on that I could really use? There's a lot of stuff that Four Peaks has. First of all, you're going to want to check out you're going to want to check out their watch party. You're going to for uh, let's see here, um, spring baseball is here. Pair it with Four Peaks wheat, and again, be sure to follow us on social. But here's the great thing going on right here. Now, new coach, new GM, the Cardinals have the third pick in the draft. It's a big opportunity for our team right there. The best place is to take in this pivotal moment and the rest of the NFL draft on April 27th is at Four Peaks 8th Street Pub. Must be 21 years and up to enjoy Four Peaks. A great stuff right there. Again, check it out. Uh, the official brew of PHNX Sports. And 
Tap and bottle. Tap and bottle watch parties. All right. Now, we might try to get something going here. Got softball, got baseball. But as you know, on the local scene, Scott and Rebecca are where it's at. Downtown or their northwest location. Uh, there's a reason that they're expanding like no other. It's because it's a fun environment, great food, great drink. And you know what? you got a lot of regulars there that enjoy bringing in other people to the equation. So, again, check it out. Tap and bottle. Okay. Now, as far as uh, Kirk Reese, or excuse me, Arizona, um, I don't like the I don't like the rumors about Dylan Anderson, but again, those are just rumors. Hopefully, one of the peaks stays here. Um, Adama Ball wouldn't surprise me if he moves on. Um, now, uh, a guy like Pella Larson, I believe I would be stunned if Pella Larson isn't back. Um, I think Tommy Lloyd likes him, and quite frankly, I think he's perfect for what you want to do at the University of Arizona. Then, on top of that, um, uh, no, Steve Wallace, nobody will ever be good enough for you. I disagree with you right here, Steve. Because again, this to me um, is this to me is not uh, that's not fair. Because again, Kerr is a solid player, but at Arizona, in my opinion, he's not good enough. And the numbers back that one up. The numbers in the tournament back that up. I would ex we've seen great point guard play over the years here at Arizona. We know what it looks like. And Kerr Creaso was not a great point guard. Again, that's a that's just the way it is. It's no uh, it's no disrespect towards him. Um, wish him nothing, you know, again, wish him nothing but the best, but at Arizona, I believe that you can do better. Um, now, uh, we got the great PJ Brown getting ready to hop in here in just a second. Um, and, uh, one last thing, Azulis Tabellis. I believe that Azulis Tabellis, um, there's a excellent chance that he could come back. Now, again, he's got options for sure. I mean, he could go, I've never really viewed, uh, Azulis as an NBA guy. I could be wrong, but Azulis is a player that could go, that would not surprise me at all. Um, uh, Azulis Tabellis, if he were to be, you know, if he were to go off to Lithuania, he could make some really good money immediately right there. Now, um, Arizona, bring him back, probably going to work on some NIL stuff. And if you revamp this roster in a way, like I said, if you got Kylan Boswell, you got uh, a player like a Caleb Love, a Pella Larson, um, then you've got also a Jewish Tabellis and Umar Ballo. All of a sudden, you're right back in the equation. So this uh, this to me at the end is very uh, – this was a, a, a necessary move. Um, again, everybody wishes Kerr nothing but the best. But I do believe that when the, you know, when the NCAA tournament hit, when all eyes were on Arizona, you kind of knew that, all right, just not quite good enough. And again, we know what great point guard play looks like at the University of Arizona. All right. Tomorrow, Jason Shear and I are going to be talking a ton about this, um, but needed to be able to get this in here because, again, this emergency podcast. So that's what we know about Kirk Creasa. That's my opinion right now. Now, let's talk some Arizona women's basketball right here and bring in the great PJ Brown. All right. Here's the deal with PJ. And PJ, tell me what I miss right here because I'm not going to try to miss anything. Follow okay. Brown on Twitter at PJBrown09. Get the Wildcaster app. Get the newspaper. Um, and um, I'm trying to think. What, am I, what else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something else. I think that's it. Just follow me on PJ09 on Twitter. And um, I'm, I'm on and off of Instagram, but not really. But everything else is where you can get everything. Okay, PJ. So let's talk about it here. Um, Arizona, uh, Arizona women's basketball, as we all know, is going to is bringing in an influx of talent coming in uh, next year. You got three top fifteen, uh, got three top fifteen players coming in. A true point guard that we're going to get to here in just a second. But just kind of put a you know, just kind of put a bow on what happened here at the uh, you know at towards the end of the season. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were a little bit confused. You're obviously the ultimate insider. What, in your opinion, you know, what went right? What went wrong? Sure. Um, first, we have to say, and I've been saying this all along, they really had a good season. I mean, you always think like when your season's ending, you're always like, well, that's a bummer, right? That's right. not as good probably as it could have been, right? You always hope for more and hope for better. Unless you're playing in the championship game and you actually win, you're sort of disappointed with your right. season. So we can say that. But this team, again, won 22 games. Uh, right. Adil Barnes has won 20 games or more in the last five seasons. That's huge. Not a lot of programs can say that. And Adil Barnes is the only 
one who's coached at Arizona who has done that. Right. So in five consecutive years. So that's that's a great thing. They also beat five ranked teams. Last year they only beat two. So that's an mm-hmm. improvement year over year. Um, and, and you saw some players really take um, a step towards improvement in different ways in their games. And that was successful. So you saw Shana Pellington sort of evolve um, into a much better distributor and right. even much better. Another thing that we need to point out with Shana is um, I don't remember if everybody uh recalls a story I wrote at the end of the summer about Shana reworking. Where can they find the story, by the way? You can find it on Tucson.com or on the free Wildcaster app. And it was about Shana really not just tweaking her outside shot, but really stripping it down and restarting it. And, And what I remember at that point was Salvo Copa, who I talked to, who is one of the assistant coaches at Arizona who was helping Shana with this said, when you take on something like this to really look at your shot and break it down, you are going to get worse before you get better. Right. And when he said worse, he means like bad, right? Like right. it just doesn't happen overnight. And we saw that with Shana. We saw how, in January and February and even in March that her outside shot looked completely different and was falling all of a sudden. Right. So that's what happened. So there was a progression for Shana this year and, and she got better in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. There was a progression for, um, you know, you can look at a lot of other players, whether they were freshmen, juniors, seniors, whatever. And, and you could see that progression and um, and that's success. I mean, we always talk about the wins and losses and, and you got to go far in the tournament. But to really run a successful program, players need to develop as you go along. And when they develop, then good things happen. It might not you might not win a championship this year, but three years down the road, you could win a championship or or these players could evolve into something so that. You know, I don't like to talk about it this much, but, you know, that they can be drafted and play at the next level, whether that's in the WNBA, which is the hardest lead to make or right. overseas. But they can do that. I mean, if you look at a Trinity Baptiste, mm-hmm. she came in here. Perfect had example. Really, perfect example. She had a really good year. She came here for a reason. Right. In her graduate year, she wanted to be coached by Adia Barnes. And have Adia Barnes and Salva Copa help her game grow so that she could be a professional basketball player and be a much better professional basketball player. Okay. Now let's talk about next year a little bit because I think the thing that you and I have talked about a lot offline is that next year, because a lot of times when you would watch Arizona basketball, the offense would look a little bit clunky. I mean, you know, I'm not really breaking any news right there. And you told me from day one, you said, you know what, when you got the, when you bring in, and this is no uh, disrespect to Shayna Pellington because she's been a warrior here at the University of Arizona, much, uh, much respect. But when you watch this team, though, you bring in a Jada Williams, somebody from of that ilk, who is that typical consummate po- uh, true point guard right there. Not only does she make her coaches' lives easier right there, she makes other players' lives easier right there. You just watch her highlights, the way that she's able to get in and out, the way that she's able to make uh, her teammates better. Again, I'm not the insider you are, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if she's given the keys next year. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard for a freshman to start in this program, especially where it is now. But if anybody's going to start, it's right. probably going to be Jada Williams. Why? Because she is that true point guard and she can do those things that you need a point guard to do. The last true point guard that we had in Tucson mm-hmm. at Arizona was Lucia Alonzo. Right. That's what she did. She was the consummate point guard. She ran the show. She distributed. She made sure everybody got their shots. And then and then you talk about Ari. Ari was a combo shooting guard, point guard. And Ari was so amazing that she could sort of make that transition and become a very good point guard. 
a really good point guard. Not everybody can do that. So we have to point that out. But to have a true point guard come in and already be able to play at that level is huge for any program, especially this program. Yeah. And I must say, for those of you who have not watched Jada Williams play or Brea Cunningham play. Right. Next Tuesday, you can on ESPN because it's the McDonald's All-American game. And the and the day before, they have like a jam fest thing where they'll be dunking and having a lot of fun and doing a lot of fun things. It's fun to watch that show, of course, and then watch the McDonald's All-American game. But I must couch it with saying this. What you will see in the McDonald's All-American game is this. You will see great athletes who are not coached, right? Right. You will see whatever the coaches want to do. They'll put in their first five and they'll let them ride for a while. And then they'll put in their next five. We don't know where Jada and Brea, which five they're going to be in and how much time they're going to get. But when you see them on the court, you will see a little bit of what they can do. And hopefully they will be on the court together because that's when they really shine. That's when you know, Jada knows exactly where Brea is down low. She knows the, and you know what? What's uh, and you've obviously watched her a lot more than I have, but the the games that I've watched, she also has a flair for the moment. You know, when when she has LeBron James sitting courtside, or when she's on national TV, and it's not that she's not doing with this when the lights aren't on, but there is a there is a time, there is a place where you can just tell that it's like, all right. This is my time right there. She's got a little bit of that it factor right there, just when you watch her, PJ. Yeah, and you and I think that you need it when you are a point guard or when you're holding the when you've got the rock in your hand, right? Right. You need a little bit of that. You need a bit of bit of flair. And and the thing about her is we talk about how she can distribute and run the offense, but she can also shoot. And right. she's not afraid to when the moment's there. She told me that. She's like, if I need to shoot, whatever my team needs me to do, I'm going to do it. All right, let me ask you this. Next year then with um, what's the uh, uh, upfront? Because obviously you got a lot of size. You got a lot of different personalities. Um, what could you see being some of the uh, the rotations? What could you see, you know, being some of Arizona's strengths? Because, you know, on paper, there's some real talent that they return, especially up front. Oh yeah. I, I think that, um, I think that some of the stuff that probably Adia wanted to run this year that just couldn't get there. I think you'll be seeing a lot of high, low stuff where, um, you know, whether it's an as Mary or, or a Brea or a, um, a Maya or something, they're going right. to be playing well together. And I think that they're um, that you can see that already with, with as and with Maya when they're on the court together. I've seen that. I've seen where Maya asks for the ball or something like that. So you'll be seeing a lot more of that. I think also, um, I think the offense will just flow better. They'll be, right. it will look different than this year because there'll be some different parts, right? Who can do some different things that this year's team just they just didn't have the skill set or the abilities to do. And then they'll play together. Also, the one thing that should be pointed out is a lot of these players have played together before or played against each other. So, uh, you know, we're talking about Brea and Jada playing together on the same team, but they know each other, like they know Maya. So getting on the court, you know, won't be that, won't be a like, oh, we got to get to know you now. They, these young players, they've played a lot and they played all over the country and they know each other. So that's going to help from day one when they get on the court. All right. Now got to, we're going to talk a little bit of charity here and some Arizona women's basketball with the great Saul Bookman. But first let me tell you about Candlin. As a lot of people know in uh, in um, education system here, isn't the greatest in the world underfunded. A lot of kids are going to school. Almost 30% of our children in Arizona live in poverty. More than 50% of these children are behind their peers before they even start kindergarten. And Candlin is on a mission to provide support program and tools. This is the epitome of a great organization. To get involved with Candlin's mission or make a donation, visit candlin.org. That's candlin.org. 
All right. Why don't we have Saul Bookman join the uh, live stream right here? Saul Bookman, a big fan of all things Arizona athletics, the all-time free throw leading shooter in Arizona <laughs> high school basketball history. Uh, PJ, I bet you didn't know that. I did not know that. And Always is, something with Saul, right? It is my mission to make sure that everybody knows. But Saul, what's on your mind there, big dog? Well, first of all, good to see you, PJ. It's been a while. Miss your face. Uh, glad that you're being able to cover a great team now uh, for the last three or four years. So uh, congrats to that. And great coverage uh, for the last couple of weeks, especially giving us a behind-the-scenes peek at, at the women's tournament out there in Maryland. So thank you for that. Um, I, so listen, we're, all day today is PHNX Community Day. And so uh, we look at a, a charity that we want to contribute um, some funds to. And we can only do that with the help of everybody in the chat right now. Uh, and we'll be doing this all day. So if you want to uh, donate some money to Ryan House, that's our charity today, which um, if you don't know much about Ryan House, a, a little synopsis is basically um, these are, are uh, children that are dealing with um, severe illnesses, uh, sometimes life-threatening Ill illnesses. Um, sometimes they're in uh, what we would consider hospice care. Um, and unfortunately in, in those, in, in that kind of structure, um, you know, the, the parents have to deal with a lot, obviously, like the kids are going through it. Uh, the, the parents are, are ob obviously going through it themselves and it's really unfortunate situation. We hope nobody has to deal with it, but there are people that have to deal with that. And, uh, the way that Ryan house helps is they basically try to take all the logistical, uh, items out and off the plate of the parents. So that way. All they can do is focus on their kids, be with their kids, uh, sometimes in their last moments, unfortunately, um, but also uh, just to support their kids, love their kids as much as possible um, during that time. And they have a facility which they do this and they ease uh, the, the caregiving for, for the kids uh, off the parents um, and all the other things. They have playgrounds, they have all these activities and stuff like that. So that way the parents, uh, the family can just be with their loved ones um, at that important time. So please, if you have uh, any money to spare, uh, donate it in the form of a super chat. All super chats today will be going to the Ryan house. We'll be keeping a tally all day long, ending with our son show tonight uh, as the Suns take on the Lakers. So uh, we please encourage you to do that because it's a, a really important mission that Ryan house has, and we want to support them as much as possible. Very cool. Um, excellent stuff. Obviously, Derek Pivko already donated 25 bucks. We appreciate it there, my guy. Thank you, sir. Um, Saul, I know you got a billion different things going on, but we can't <laughs> have you on here without sure. talking some Arizona women's basketball. What were your thoughts on the year? We're talking about next year, obviously, bringing in a top five class. What does Saul Bookman think? Well, you know, I, I love I love Shayna and I love Kate Reese. I do. I, I loved their tenacity. I loved what they brought to the program. I loved um, their overall work ethic um, and their stick to itiveness. I do think, however, though, um, because of their own limitations in certain regards, it did limit the offense as a whole. So I think that's what you're kind of referring to in terms of some sticking points and things not really flowing the way that you would like to see on the offensive side of the ball. Um, so I think – uh, when you bring in this new influx of talent, I think that will open up things just just because it's going to have to, right? Uh, I think if you looked at Adia Barnes's teams these last two seasons without Ari in the fold, uh, you you see some Sean Miller tendencies, uh, right. really good on the defensive end, uh, kind of uh, unpredictable sometimes on the offensive end. Um, I think we're going to get back to opening that up a little bit. And uh, I mean, listen, Adia is one of the best coaches in the game. Uh, she's going to figure it out along with Salvo and that whole coaching staff. They do a tremendous job year in, year out. Uh, and the other thing I, I do want to say, too, is, is I thought it was really telling from Kate and Shayna um, in their postgame press conference the other day about why they called Coach, uh, Coach Barnes a dia, uh, why they have a, a unique relationship with her, and how that really has is, is transformed their own lives and their own progress in life because of the relationship they have with Adia. And I think, listen, at the end of the day, I don't give a, I don't give a shit if Adia loses every game next year. If she has that kind of impact on these ladies, uh, that's significant enough. And, and I think, I think that, it's important. I think it's important too to remember too what Adia Barnes inherited now because I think a lot of times you know we become bro, victims of our own bro. success. You were their front row, bro. Saul. I mean, you bro. Were, right, bro. You, when I say when I say uh, some of these players 
were literally walking out of halftime like they didn't have a care in the world. I can't even understate that or overstate that enough. Like it was abysmal. It was bad. And when Adia took over, we, her and I had a discussion one time and I said, uh, you know, that was a tough game. And, you know, and she <laughs> looked me dead in the face. She said, uh, yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, God bless her. I, I love her to death. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I think better, better days are ahead for sure for this program. Listen, they got into the tournament three times in a row. They're a good program. I thought a seven seed was atrocious. I thought they should have been at least at, at the worst of five. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, and we move on, and, and they're going to be a top 25 team next year. And I, I expect them to fully compete for a Pac-12 championship again next year. And yeah, growing up, just – go ahead, sir. Uh, Sorry, PJ, you're, you're up. So, so Sal, as you know, like, they, they weren't having fun before Adia got there. Remember, that was just – they didn't even want to be out there. So it's been a huge change. Um, and also, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be, you know – we're moving on to a new era with with now no Kate, and no Shana. Really, the, the the people who had key parts in in really turning around this program, you know, the Aries, the you know, the Sams, the people who stayed like that, Kate and Shana will now be gone. So you will see the new era. Arizona Wildcats next season, whatever it's going to be, which will take them to that next level. They were able to get up here, which is great. And, and that's wonderful. But now it's time to sort of go on, move on. And, and they did their part. They put Arizona back on the map. And, and that was an incredible thing coming from, as Sal, you said, where they were to where they are now. I mean, I remember when I was growing up and uh, with Joan Bonvicini, who did some very, very good things right here. But, you know, when you made the NCAA tournament here, it was a big deal. Now we expect to make the NCAA tournament. And I think that is the difference now is that expectations have been have risen significantly under Adia. And that's something that I don't think that you can really understate or overstate to quote Saul Bookman. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think the other thing about this is that that the women's program is one of the best in the country now. Uh, and, and for the longest time, I, I, I de definitely thought like, well, if the men can do it, why can't the women? Like, I, I just, I don't, if you can recruit to Tucson, you're a good recruiter, period. And so you got that recruiter now in idea. She's personable. She's played the game at a high level. She's gotten to the sweet 16. She's the all time, you know, all, all the accolades that you want. And now she's doing it on the coaching side and U of A's rewarded her accordingly too. Uh, based on on her own performance, which I think is great, and you want to keep those kind of coaches around forever. Uh, Adia is a wildcat, it, like through and through. That's what, what she is, uh, and so she backs I, I the A. She definitely backs the A. We yes. got to get her on this show, uh, Mike. We got to get her on the show. I would, like, I, uh, you're yeah. the one with the connection, yeah. Saul Bookman. <laughs> <laughs> I will text her. I will text her and say, "Come on, man, stop ghosting us. Let's go get on this show." Because right. uh, listen, the, the community would love it. We'll get some of these players on here too. Like it'll it'll be fun. And so uh, nobody backs the A like you, Mike. Uh, but we all support the Wildcats in, in, in various different ways. And I'm looking forward very much to this new era of Arizona basketball to uh, post Kate and post Shana, not no disrespect to them whatsoever. They were tremendous Wildcats. They've gone to the national championship. They helped contribute in big ways. And more than anything, they, they, they are just professionals at, at, right. as, as people, right? They're, they're top notch caliber people. Um, and if you've ever spoken to either one of them, like you always leave impressed by either one of those two. And now we're going to see a new influx of talent that comes in and hopefully some more final fours down the road uh, for both programs, uh, but specifically the women. I think they're, they're right there on the cusp. And I will say they have about a two or three wheel year window uh, because what you don't want to have happen is you have this early success and then, and then you kind of, you kind of plateau a little bit. And you lose that kind of that steam as a as a national kind of hot point, uh, which Adia basically built for the last three years. Now you got a couple of McDonald's All Americans that are going to come in the fold. If you don't take advantage of that here in the next couple of years, then you end up being a, a really good team, but never one of those elite teams. And this is kind of the time where you can really take it over that notch and become one of those top tier programs like the Yukons of the world um, and stay there. And I think if she if she goes about this the right way and the team performs the right way, they will. I want to get your guys' take on next year, but first, Saul Bookman, do you like pizza? 
I love pizza. I really love Mount Mike's pizza, though. PJ Brown, do you like pizza? I love pizza. I'm from Chicago. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. All right. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Guess what? I'm going around Sacramento. Guess what I ran into last week? A Mountain Mike's Pizza. The movement is national. It is not local. It is national. Mountain Mike's Pizza. Great stuff. Again, check it out. Uh, MountainMikesPizza.com. Go to their Mesa Chandler or Tucson locations. Oracle and Wentmore here. And here's the really good deal. You can place your next order and new diehards get a $50 voucher upon signing up. Check it out right there. Again, it was awesome. I got super excited when I saw Mountain Mike's Pizza. I tweeted it out immediately. So again, the movement is national and it is being televised. All right. Before we sign off though here, I'm not I want both of your uh, guys ex or both of your expert opinions. PJ, Saul, what do you expect? What do you want to see from the team next year? What are your expectations for the Wildcats this 23-24 uh, season? Okay, for me, yeah. I, I really want to see these young players come together and really because they are the future of this program. So they come together and they play together as a team like we've seen in the past really consistently. Um, I'd like to see the, the defense shore up again to be um, – I know the numbers were there this year, but it didn't seem like – always Arizona defense, right? And that's what this program is built on. So I'd like to see the defense come back and really take over. And then the rest will take care of them itself, I think. And then just the playing together. I think if they play together and they sort of, and we can see that progression as the year goes on, uh, this team will be right there at the end of the year. Saul Bookman? Yeah, I, I, I would probably say, um, you know, you just want, you want that development to continue, right? You're going to need a little bit more from, uh, from uh, you know, like, listen, like my Najee didn't get a lot of playing time this year, uh, probably not as much as she expected to get. Uh, what's her development going to be? And the biggest jump for most players is their freshman to sophomore year because they now they understand the, the requirements, the load that, that is on them, not only as an athlete, but also as a student. Um, it's just a completely different animal going from high school to college. And so their biggest jump is typically from year one to two. I want to see that jump from Ayanaji. And as PJ mentioned just a few minutes ago, the development in this program, I want to see it continue. I, om I almost want to say I want to see it go a little bit further. Um, I think the, the player development has been good. It could be a little bit better. And so I, I think when you, when you look at a player like her, Lauren Ware is going to have a big impact next year. Um, you know, and, and I just think – those variables, those players that 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 are in the program that can take it to another level. Yeah, you're going to add this new influx of talent, and you might even have a couple of players from the transfer portal that might pop in too. But the players that you already have in the program, they are the ones that essentially are going to take you to that next level because they know what the expectation is, and that player development model has is, is, is got to improve just a slight bit. I think that they have that in them. Um, and listen, they, they should be a top 15, 10 program in the con country right now they're in the top 25 which is no slight to them that's right. great it's a, that, that's where you want to be but i think they're capable of more and i think they're, they're going to reach that point she is the great pj brown follow pj brown on twitter at pj brown 09 download the wildcaster app also, get the Arizona Daily Star, and you could read this while you're at Mountain Mike's Pizza, whether you're in Sacramento or Tucson. The great Saul Bookman, GM of PHNX Wildcats. You can check Saul tonight on the Phoenix Suns postgame show. Are you guys doing one of those watch-alongs that gets like 10,000 live views? <laughs> <laughs> I no, we're, not doing, we're not doing a watch-along tonight, but we will do one next week. Uh, but again... Uh, charity, community, PHNX Community Day, all day today. Please donate money to the Ryan House. Uh, and you can always check out more on the Ryan House by going to ryanhouse.org. And uh, big thanks to Jacob Franklin, all six foot eight of him behind the scenes, making me sound better than I should. Everybody out there, really appreciate you all. I'll be back with you tomorrow. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Mm -hmm.